Hi, I'm Henry Tucker and we're here today at Frontier Developments in Cambridge and I'm with David Braben who's the CEO and we're going to talk a little bit about Elite. But uh, before before we get on to the, the fact that obviously there's a new Elite coming, yeah. which all us gamers are very excited about, I've always wondered this, as a gamer who played it 20 odd years ago, where did the original idea for the Elite come from? It was a bizarre mix of things. Um, I, I think the, the first ones, I had a computer, which is an Acorn Atom, which is an absolutely amazing thing for me at the time, to be able to create things. My, it made, my, my first assembler program was an expanding star field. And I just found it mesmerizing. I thought, oh, I've got to do something in this. We sort of it just begged to have spaceships flying around it. But it was quite a lot later before I actually managed to do that and uh, created some spaceships. And then the game itself felt just a bit a bit dull, a bit counterproductive in the sense that you just think, oh, well, yes. Because if you imagine, a lot of the games at the time were things like um, Space Invaders and Galaxian. And so the expectation was you get attacked by some things and they get a bit harder and then you get attacked again. But um, I'd put together some 3D code, which I was very proud of, but then you get attacked by these things. You know, I actually couldn't afford to have too many of them. And so there wasn't enough sort of material to make a game interesting. And so, um, and then I met Ian Bell and we talked about it, hence the idea of... Uh, oh, and actually, in parallel came to this, was uh, this game had a score. I didn't like the idea. You know, the, the, the typical thing was at um, 10,000 score, you got an extra life. But I wanted to choose what I got, you know, a better gun or something. Yeah. And so the idea of score being money and spending it, and it okay. all with sort of Thatcher in power at the time, mm -hmm. it all seemed to quite fit. Yeah. <laughs> sort of yeah. ironic, sort of interesting way. Because, it, I mean, it was the first sort of open world game where, I mean, there was an end, sort of. Well, no, there wasn't. Because when we first had the, the game, um, there was no ranking. That was sort of we, we added that to try and give some long term sort of structure sure. to it. Yeah. But also the um, we'd written the game for ourselves. We wanted a game that was different. We wanted a game that you could play for a long time. Mm -hmm. And uh, in on um, mainframe computers at the time, as they were called, there were games like uh, Adventure. And those were just coming out to machines like the Apple II and the BBC Micro, where yeah. uh, Colossal Cave Adventure and various things, where you type in Go West and it tells you a paragraph of text mm. and you might go Go West again and you, type, you find out something else. And you, you So very simple text adventures were very compelling because you play them for a while. And I thought that that, that, that that interesting mechanic that applied to a graphical game would be great, where yeah. you actually have something that's more long-term, more story-based. Yeah, Because it was actually, for, for such a, a, a wide game, in terms of um, size, the actual sort of bits mm. and bytes, it was it, tiny. How big was it? The original BBC Micro version was 22K, and uh, the machine had 32K, but we needed 10K for the screen, so we right. absolutely hammered it down to get it to fit into that right. small that amount It's amazing memory. when you consider the, the, well, the, the size of you know, games now and the, even just the operating system for things like the Xbox and PlayStation. Well, a typical email is more than 22K. And it's just because there's so much sort of guff at the start, all the headers, and, and all nowhere near as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> so why, so why, why have you chosen now to 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 reboot it to to bring it up to to modern sort of levels? Well, it's been a long time, and one of the things that I've certainly wanted to do is to bring multiplayer into the world of Elite. And so it's a, it's a combination of the opportunity arising. You know, we've been watching Kickstarter for more than a year now, and mm. just thought, oh, mm. that would be an interesting way of doing it. Mm. We've looked at bringing um, Elite back to life quite uh, quite a few times over the, the past years, but it's been done in um, sort of as a sort of stealth pro project. Whenever yeah. we've had some spare time, we've done sure. some work on it, but not as a full on, um, you know, priority funded project with an end date and everything. Yeah, and so. Um, I, I think just a combination of events have come together and the, the Kickstarter opportunity, as soon as Kickstarter launched in the UK, we, we thought we'd be on there and that's what, that's what we did and that's, that's why we, we embraced it. Okay, so obviously you're retaining a lot more control over it, say, than if it was owned, if you were working for, on it for a publisher like some of the other games you do, I would imagine. That's right. I mean, one of the problems with uh, working with publishers is they, and I don't completely understandably, have to look at these things as an investment and they have to look at what their forecast return on investment is. And so one of the challenges there is they look around and see what other games of a similar style have been. Sure. They use that to base their forecast on and mm -hmm. hopefully they 
they get a reasonable reassurance that the game's not going to lose money, it's going to be profitable. Yeah. Now the problem is there hasn't been this sort of game for more than 10 years. So there's nothing they can really base it on. So the mm. forecasts tend to be very low. Or worse, and this is the thing that would be most afraid of, is saying, well, try and make it a bit more like this one. Mm. And you end up making a game that no one really necessarily wants to make no. or necessarily is going to do well. You know, it's not true with all publishers. Some publishers are brave and they say, no, we're going to go for this, we're going to do it right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think that is a challenge and it's a, a challenge we've had right at the start of Elite we had because we went to um, company Thorn EMI and showed them the game. And they said, oh, we want this game to have a score, we want it to have lives, yeah. you know, because they're saying, well, your competitors are, are games like Galaxian and they're much quicker and much more frantic. And I said, yes, they're different. Yeah. You know, we're making an, an epic. We're not making a, a, a five minute cartoon that just that comes on just before the news, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and there isn't a game like this. They said, oh, well, but then it won't, you know, the, how, that's probably because people don't want games like that, mm -hmm. you know, but a, as it happens, the reason that they, and they rejected it, they didn't want it. Yeah. Um, but the reasons they listed, but they were very, very good actually to list the reasons. But to me, those are the key points right. that made the game successful. Those are the ones you wanted to stick with, yeah. yeah. Now, obviously, um, there been other sort of uh, there been many attempts or many goes at this sort of open world um, place where you create your own character, whether it's as a, as a spacecraft or as a as a person. One example that springs to mind is um, was APB, um, which is uh, which was unfortunately. Bit of a disaster. Mm -hmm. um, now, did that? That's their experience of years of development, lots of venture capital funding. Did that have any influence in your in your choices to go with the Kickstarter, the the crowdsourcing fund? No, um, APB. Uh, sadly, I watched it for a while and always was very worried about what they were doing. I mean, the the game that they were sort of taking inspiration from, I think, to some extent, was uh, GTA. Yes, of course. And um, interestingly, right at the start of when they were making GTA up in Scotland, uh, a friend of mine, who I knew quite well, a guy called Gary Penn, mm -hmm. actually described the game to me as elite in the city. Right, okay. The GTA. So um, I, I think it, it, quite often people see the, the wrong things in games that they try and emulate. Mm. You know, that, that, that um, with GTA, they they got it spot on, they got something, that the, the yeah. freedom to do what you like, and I think that's what made GTA appeal, it's made, what made Elite appeal, appeal. I think the the issue with um, APB, and I don't know enough of the details, and, but they spent a huge amount of money mm. on uh, in a setup where there was, they didn't have a strong reason to believe it was going to succeed to the effect that no. it, it did, you know, at that time the PC was um, very much sort of in the descendancy, you know, it wasn't, mm -hmm. there, there weren't a lot of them around um, to go on, there were a lot of other factors that work, worked against it. Um, whereas now we're seeing quite a resurgence, especially with excellent services like Steam and Origin, yes, you know, um, um, helping bolster it. And of course now the Windows 8 App Store, so a lot of things sort of going forward. So I think with all of these things, the, one of the advantages, for example, with Kickstarter is we did show, and we, we convinced ourselves, everyone, that there is a, there are a lot of people who want this game to come back. Yeah, uh, I think the point with APB is there was a lot of competition at that side at that time, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the competition was really good. Yeah, you know, because of GTA, there's also Saints Row, and there are a few others. Yeah, you know, and, and I think that it had a lot of things sort of working against it. Yeah, it, it kind of might have worked a bit better if they'd taken your approach, and you know, maybe got people involved with it because it seemed to be in development for so long hmm. that everybody's initial interest in it probably had waned by the time the game had come out. That's right and you also do wonder how much um, they had looked at what people wanted mm. on, and whether they were just they were emulate, emulating thing that was already from the past in other words GTA had already moved on by then yeah, as yeah. Saints Row had, had, as had the other competition. Yeah. I mean I, I guess there's some, some sort of element of um, the World of Warcraft phenomenon as well because it was almost like it was creating a World of Warcraft of GTA world wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was sort of like a, a never ending online version that, that maybe they were just hoping to tap into that sort of... But without really looking at the lessons I mean mm. the, the, the to me, the, some, a game like War, World of Warcraft continually evolves, and that's yeah. an important part of it. You know, yes, they're, they're of continually improving it, bringing out updates, mm -hmm. and the, you know the, the way the players play mm -hmm. is it, subtly changing, not necessarily day by day, but gradually it's adapting, or they're adapting the game to fit in with the styles of play that they see. 
Now, obviously, during the um, the kickstarting Kickstarter process, you uh, as as a backer, I was receiving the the, the, the updates from mm. yourselves with concept art, which clearly, as you see behind you, incredibly detailed. Now, obviously, you had people very very talented people working on this yeah. on a project that hadn't been greenlit at that stage. How, how was that process being being run? Well, we were running it. I mean, we believed in it, mm. and we'd already put a lot of effort into um, making the underlying technology. And I have said publicly, and will continue to say, this is a game that we wanted to make. We have every intention of making. Mm. Um, and if Kickstarter campaign hadn't have worked, and okay. thankfully it did, we still would want to make it happen. Right. You know, we, we're we're putting our best foot forward. Um, you know, the, what we're not doing is folding our arms saying, "Oh, we're not doing that until we've got." And, you know, that that yeah. would be madness. You know, yeah. this is something that we really care about. And yes, we we will put we will put more to it than than we've got from Kickstarter. You know, that's the whole point. We care about this. We want to make this a really really good game. And we you know I do really believe in it. It's not just hot air for the Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant.